Uh, yeah, hope you're okay. So I was just going to do a live. I'll just tell you what's happened in the past sort of week. And then we'll just have a general chat about YouTube, what I'm doing, work, what I'm doing, and then what I've got in this month because it's a pretty hectic month. And just the fact that I think a lot of you guys appreciate when I talk about the kind of mental health side of the job. I know it's a bit different because a lot of the stuff I do, as well as doing, you know, I do plumbing six days a week, Monday to Saturday, but I do a lot of stuff with like Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. I ain't got a clue what I'm doing on TikTok, but I just feel like I put myself under pressure to have a presence on all these social media platforms to try and stay relevant kind of thing. But yeah, I've had um, I've had a tough, tough week. And I know, I always know when I'm feeling a bit down because I can feel it in my voice. My voice goes quieter and I don't really want to talk to anyone. I just want to keep my head down and get on with my work and just not not really see anyone, stuff like that. And like my dad, he helps me with the office work and he helps me, comes out onto site and fetches me stuff if I need it. I wasn't even like talking to him. And if he brought me something, I wasn't saying thank you. Just wasn't, not been with it the whole week. So I'll start at the beginning. Now what I'll do is, um, when I've finished telling you I'll have a look at all the, the comments and then I'll answer questions if anyone's got any questions. I mean, I've not got anywhere to be. As long as it don't get dark, I could sit here talking all night. So, um, last week, week before last, I went to Germany with um, Stabila. So I was dead lucky. I got invited to the Stabila factory in Germany for like a behind the scenes tour. Um, we could like film stuff. So I'd filmed everything I saw there to make a YouTube video. And everything was fine, I had a really good time, filmed loads of it. And to, to enable me to go to Germany, like the two days before I had to go, I was working till like nine, 10 o'clock at night to get my jobs done, to get sort of to a stage where I wouldn't have to stress about it on ringing me while I was away. So I've done loads of work, obviously filmed it for YouTube, a couple of them were like the ends of big jobs, like the important bits, commissioning a boiler, um, the gas connection, stuff like that, that I wanted to film. And it was all on my phone. And then I went to Germany and I filmed everything from the trip and that was all on my phone. And then I came back. Now, you might be watching this thinking, you know, because I've said that I'm a bit down, that something really serious has happened. And you might, when I tell you what's happened, you might think, oh, that's not too bad. But to me and what I do, it's pretty bad. And also to my my personal life as well, it's pretty bad. So I came back from Germany and that was fine. And I was in the car on the way home and I just went to open my phone to look at something and the screen wouldn't work on my phone. So I couldn't unlock the phone. I couldn't use my face ID because it's an Apple iPhone. Um, so I thought, I'll do like a soft reset. So I did that, turned it back on, still wouldn't work. And all it wanted to keep doing was ringing the emergency service. In fact, I called the emergency service twice while I was trying to sort this thing out. I had to apologize. But it ended up, I, when I got home, I thought I'll charge it. I'll connect it to the Wi-Fi. It's probably just, I don't know, having a bit of a brain fart. So um did some research said you need to plug it into a computer so i plugged it into my macbook and it said this phone's got a problem it needs an update and there was two boxes update the phone or restore to factory settings so i clicked on update and it started doing its thing and then when it had finished i had that white screen you know it says like holla like all different languages saying hello so i was like oh fucking hell what have i done so then I couldn't do anything. I thought, just go to the Apple shop in the morning. So Sunday morning, I was outside there before they even opened, gave him my phone, the guy looked at it, and apparently there's like a, a sensor in the screen that operates the swipe, feet, you know, the touch screen part of the screen, and it had failed, which can happen. Um, I'd not dropped it, not got it wet or anything. It literally just stopped working. So, but, and he said that they would have done exactly the same thing. They would have plugged it into a computer, they would have updated it, um, and it's just unlucky that it's restored to factory settings. 
needs a new screen so i went off for an hour he's sorting the screen out when i got back they gave me the phone and it's uh, got the new screen on but it's restored to factory settings so then i go through the process of trying to put my backup onto my phone and when i did that there was only two backups listed and they were from my ipad so there was nothing for my phone so i asked the guy i was like what's happened here where's my backup from my phone he said i don't know um that there your backups there's, there's nothing else you can do so i left the apple shop with nothing on my phone nothing at all because i don't put anything on my ipad um when i got home you know i felt sick because i had nothing on my phone i had no contacts nothing um got home started to look into it couldn't work out why i didn't have any backups or anything like that and basically i've lost everything on my phone from i've had an apple phone for the last 10 years so i've lost everything with my dog my cat that died my niece and nephew growing up just everything from my life that i had on that phone and then all of my social media stuff all of my um stuff i'd filmed well not all of it because i do put some of it on my ipad before i edit it for a youtube video but just everything and my like my logo my um music for the intro for this my intros just anything and everything that i use to do social media is just gone and everything from my life from the past 10 years has just gone and i've tried everything um, that I can think of. I've been on the cloud. I've done everything I can think of. I've even went to try my old phone because normally what happens is when I get a new phone, I'll give the old one to my dad or my mum will use it just to see if there was anything on anywhere and I've lost it. So I basically had to start again and I just felt, I don't know, felt really sick. Uh, the thought of, I don't like editing my YouTube videos anyway. I think it's like really hard work for me, but the thought of actually starting again with the intros, the music, um, all of the footage. Um, yeah, just, I just like, I've not wanted to do it for the last two weeks because of that. So that's what's happened. Um, and then just like work has been the busiest it's ever been. Um, the last, I reckon the last eight weeks I've not had any time to do anything apart from work. Obviously, I went to Germany, um, which, uh, and the thing with Germany is like, it's a re it was a really good opportunity and I was, I, w I felt lucky that I'd got the chance to go, but then I didn't want to go um, because I was a bit stressed. I didn't want to, I knew I had work on, um, got this big job I'm doing with Ben, um, which would have meant him working there without me and I felt guilty for that and stuff like that. But yeah, it was just a really, um, really shit thing to happen. So I know, um, I mean, I did say to the guy in the Apple shop, I was like, well, no one's died. So it's not like the worst thing that could have happened, but it was just, yeah, it was, to me, it was bad. So um, yeah, that's what's happened. So I am gonna, um, I'll snap out of it. I've got a, a nice week next week, so I'm working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, finishing off some jobs, and then Thursday and Friday next week, it's the Tool Fair, which is at Coventry, at the Rico Arena. Um, so I've got that to look forward to. Obviously, I love looking at tools. There's not been a tool show since COVID, so it'll be nice to do that. Velocity will be there um, with my bags, so I'm gonna be hanging around the Velocity stand if you want to come and talk to me about my bags, anything, you can see the bags. I don't, you can probably buy them as well at the show. I don't know if you can. Um, depends if they can take stock with them, but you can see all the bags. And if you want to have a chat with me about them, chat me about anything, just come up and talk to me if you want to. Um, so that's next week. And then the Thursday night and the Friday night next week, I'm going to be after the show going to Unilight to the podcast. Um, studio and we're going to be doing a couple of podcasts recording some which I'm really looking forward to because the last one we did I don't know if you've seen the first week but the first week was like the intro show where I was a bit nervous um, Alex interviewed me and then we had a couple of other guests but the show from last week we recorded or the week before 
was um, David from Nipex Tools and Nick Bundy, the electrician. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel and we had a right laugh. Like We didn't stop laughing the whole time. Um, so that one's going to be really good. That podcast, I think, releases Sunday next week. So I'm really looking forward to that. And the more, the thing with me, everything I do, like... When I start off, I'm a bit nervous, a little bit shy, but once I get one done, one under my belt, and I get sort of comfortable, then I enjoy it more and then I can sort of relax and be myself. So yeah, that was good, we had a, we had a laugh. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And then I've got a week at work, um, full week at work to catch up, because the week after that is Installer Show. So if you've never been to Installer Show, that is like, one of the best plumbing and heating shows well i think it's the best one it's in coventry again at the rico and it's three days and i don't know who's going to be there this year but normally it's everyone like all the boiler companies anything and everything to do with plumbing really um it's a really nice show and you can just go around and meet everyone so if you go to that i'll be there walking around the the velocity uh, stand will be there as well with my bags and then I'm also going to be um, on the um, Lawton tube, copper tube, their stand, um, announcing some kind of award. Um, there's a competition going at the minute. If you submit a, a job you've done with copper, and I think it's hashtag copper champion, you can win your body weight in copper. So if you want to enter that, go to Lawton Copper check out their page and start eating some donuts because you, you, you can win your body weight and there's a really nice trophy it's made out of i think it's a massive fitting copper fitting with your name will be engraved on it like there will only be one of them in the world so definitely worth entering and then i think on the thursday there's like a student day so i'm going to be talking to some students with andy cam so that'll be good um and then i've not asked permission for this yet but on the Tuesday night, there's um, there's a dinner after the show called the Installer Merit Awards. I've got my own table at the show. So I think I'm going to give away one seat at my table. Um, I think just leave a comment on this video if you want to come. So basically, I've got a table. Um, Todd Glistar, Ian Briggs. Um, who else is going to be on my table? My dad. Keith Harrison, Stan, um, Billy, um, just a few people that you might know off Instagram will be on my table having dinner. You get free dinner, free drink all night. So just one person that likes my YouTube videos, if you want to come and meet all those guys, um, I'll get you a place on my table. How about that? So that's that. Um, so yeah. I'll, um, I'll try and get back into doing the YouTube videos next week. So let's have a look at some of the comments. Um, hopefully everyone's being kind. All right, here we go. Oh. Played much Warzone. No, I've not played Warzone for weeks. I've not, been on my, I've not touched my Xbox, so the answer to that one check out andy's taking club talking club for men they're doing great work. am i still working for press it um i do help out andy at press it uk he's going to be on that table at the dinners as well so if you want any like advice on getting into press dm me on instagram um you can just ring me and i'll have a chat with you um it's not like a sales thing i'll just try and advise you on the best tool and the best profile press fittings to use so you know because a lot of people get confused with the jaws like what jaws do I need which is the best press tool to get so if you want to have a chat that's fine right um, sorry about this bit this is where I just read Yeah, I checked my iCloud account. The only thing I got back was my contacts list, which is better than nothing because I had like, the other thing is all my work stuff, like text messages where I'd spoke about jobs, agreed prices for stuff, um, all that's gone. 
all my apps, like just having to download all the apps again, remember the passwords, login, stuff like that. Um, yeah, just a lot of stuff has just gone. Right. Who makes the best Cordra? Well, every time I've done a poll to ask what Cordra I should get, the majority of people say Makita, the old school Makita one. So I'll say that. I've got a Matabo one, which is great. What's the best place to buy tools at the start? I don't know what the best place is, but my best advice for buying tools is take your time and buy quality tools. Don't just buy all your tools outright. Buy them slowly, one at a time. Like, get a decent S-Wing hammer. Get a decent set of probably Weira screwdrivers. Get some Nipex pliers wrench. Get some decent grips and just go, you know, go slowly. And as long as you don't leave them in someone's house um, and look after them, they'll last, some of them will last you your whole career. So that would be my advice. It's nice as well if you're working and you're like, oh, I had this when I was an apprentice. Like I've done, think of all the jobs I've done with this. Think of all the things I've fixed with this tool. And then like me, I still use my granddad's tool. So imagine you doing your whole career with a certain tool and then passing it on to your son or passing it on to your, gran your grandson and watching them use it. I mean, things like that are priceless. Oh, and... sorry, someone keeps ringing me. Right. Uh, can't trust an iPhone. Where did we get to with the questions? Right, I'm really sorry about this. Someone keeps ringing me. I don't know if they're doing it on purpose, but I've put my phone on Do Not Disturb and it, the calls are still getting through. Right, um... If you are doing it on purpose, that's not... Obviously, you think it's funny, but it's not. Um, right, I'm just trying to look at... Questions. Sorry about this. any new tools well i'm going to tool fair so i imagine i will buy some new tools there's not anything i think um well i know we're uh, they have new stuff out every i don't know twice a year they bring new stuff out so it'll be good it'll be good to see the new stuff there but there's not anything that i'm thinking oh i can't wait to go to tool fair to buy this i'm just gonna i'll just look at everything every time someone comments it goes back to the start, so I'm not going to keep swiping up to the old questions. Otherwise, I'm just going to be sat here swiping the screen. Uh, I'm self-employed mentally. It's hard work. What advice should you give to switch off? That's the tricky thing. Like You get home from work, and then you're thinking about the work you've just done and the work you've got on the next day and maybe a, cust a job that went wrong or a customer that's not paying you know all those things it's hard to like not think about them because you're going to think about them because you care and it's your livelihood it's your you know you've you got to pay the bills so you need money to come in you might be worrying because you've got no work you might be worrying because you work for a company and someone at the job or your boss is being a dick and you might have trouble with the missus like she's saying to you every day what time are you getting home and work's just shit at the minute so you, you're always late and just all little things like that add up like all little stresses like um, things with me like I've hurt my knee um, so I ran my 5k yesterday with my knee strapped up but that things little things like that I just worry about my knee not being able to do stuff because my knees hurting um, little things little things add up um, right if I could do any other job what would you have done I wanted to be a fireman when I was um, when I was younger so um, that I would also like quite like to be an electrician I'd quite like to be a carpenter
quite like to work with animals. Um, sometimes when I'm having a really bad day, I just think I could work in a supermarket stacking shelves, or I'd be like um, a waiter in a restaurant. I'd be anything like that. Anything. Um, can you get hold of the Stabilis Spirit Levels? Um, do you mean the plumbers ones? I brought two back with me, so I'm going to do a giveaway and give them away. And they're going to look at selling them in the UK. Now, the reason they can't sell them in the UK is because there's a patent that stops them from doing it. But if you want one, if you like, you've seen it, if you feel like that's a great, great idea, I want one. Buy it off German Amazon and just get it shipped to the UK. So you can buy it from outside the UK. You just can't buy it in the UK. So that's um, that's what you can do with that. Uh, real world radiator sizing video, please. I mean, most people would use an app at the minute. I use that, is it the mirrors calculator, the wheel, when we're calculating them, but I can, I can do that. ETA on the PB service bag, I think it's Saturday next week. I think they arrive on Saturday, but it's always subject to delay, especially since COVID. Um, there's always a delay or something's gone wrong, but that's what they told me. Did I finish the heat geek course? No, I've started it and I've not had time to do any more. So that's, an, like, that's another thing. I'd love to have time to do that, but with everything else I've got going on, I just don't, not had any time to think um, the last yeah, two months at least. It's just been hectic. But it's better than having no work on, so I shouldn't complain. No, I'm not in the gym car park. I have been to the gym today, though. Tell us about Todd winning in the competition at Stabila. So they had a... Um, a rig set up with some spirit levels and you had to hold your body weight up like um, you were doing a dip but hold yourself up and I had the first go um, and I got three minutes and like seven seconds or something and my arms were absolutely killing me um, then I had to go and do something else and they shouted me over and Tom from Stabila was on like three minutes 20 seconds so I was like, oh great, he's beat me. So being how competitive I am, I had to have another go. So then I had another go, even though my arms were killing, I got three minutes 27. And then they told me that Tom had cheated and he just stood there until the clock had gone by my time and then he jumped up. So I was in the lead again. And then of course, Todd has a go and he's like a gymnast and absolutely smashed my time. He doubled it, he got six over six minutes. Uh, my excuse is I've got about 100 kilos to hold up. So that's that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Right. Why does this question about real world size and keep coming up? I've just completed my apprenticeship, finally time to serve. What advice do you have in regards to going self-employed? I'm confident in what I'm doing, but do you think I should stay where I am? A hundred percent, Lee, stay with your boss. If he's just put you for an apprenticeship and taught you everything he knows, it would be a massive kick in his balls if you left now to become his competition. So give him two or three years. You can build your um, customer base up by working weekends or whatever. You can build your knowledge up, your skill up by working. You can save some money up so you've got enough money to buy a van um, all the things that come with being self-employed your public liability your gas safe registration all that so have it in your mind for the future but don't do it straight away because you in my opinion you definitely owe your boss at least two or three years because while you were training when you started you weren't making him any money he you were costing him money basically so now that you are able to earn him some money earn him some money because that's one of the reasons why people don't take on apprentices is because when the apprentice gets qualified they leave straight away and it's been like thanks for that so yeah if you are um i mean do what you want it's your life but that's my my opinion personally uh, 
tried some of your cooking skills with the wraps. Yeah, a lot, I was surprised by that. A lot of people um, did my meal prep videos, tried the recipes out. I will do another one soon, but yeah, I was surprised because I thought that video would, would bomb. But um, yeah, it was surprisingly good. Matabo or Milwaukee? Well, I use Matabo and I don't have any issues with Matabo, but Milwaukee have got a massive range. So I have to use some Milwaukee tools as well, like the pipe cut, I love it. The wet vac, I prefer the Milwaukee wet vac over the Matabo wet vac because the Milwaukee one is a nice square unit. Although my Milwaukee wet vac is broken at the minute. Um, I still prefer the shape and the design of it to my Matabo one. What else have I got this Milwaukee? Oh, the air compressor, you know, for pumping up expansion vessels. That's a great bit of kit. And I use that more for pumping up my van tires because, as you know, I have a really bad look with my van tires that always seem to be flat. Um, there's that radiator size in comment again. Okay. Any good things coming in the next Trade Legends? So the next Trade Legends podcast... I think is um, R Davies Electrical. He's a guy on Instagram. I think he does TikTok as well. And Residual Current, because he's an electrician, but he's also got Loadout Shop. So he started his own business selling tools and kit bags. So we're going to be interviewing those two guys. And then the Thursday night, uh, the Friday night this week, I think... I don't even know who it is, but all I know is it'll be good because I'm I'm getting confident in it now um, and I can sort of relax and have a laugh. So I'm really looking forward to this. Hopefully, like uh, during the installer show, we've got Alex Woodward on. Um, he's, um, he's a plumber from Scotland. He got a cancer scare. He thought he had cancer and he ran from Scotland to Wembley. Um, who else are we going to have on? Andy Cam's coming on. Um, I think Carly, the gas engineer. And I think Andy from Press It UK is going to be on. But they're all to be confirmed. That's um, that's after install the show. Right. I think we're done. We've been on nearly half an hour. So if no one else has got any questions, I don't think I've got anything else to say. Oh, um, I did go and do the, um, the Law and Copper Tube factory. So I went for a proper tour this time because the last time I was there, I was just visiting with Andy. We just went for an hour and I got my phone out and did a YouTube live. But because that video was so popular, they invited me back and I filmed the whole process from start to finish. What happens in the copper factory, how they make it, how they stretch the copper into the different sizes, just everything to do with making the copper. And we also had a chat at the end about why the copper prices go up and down and just i just asked them things that i thought you would want to know like common sense questions so i filmed all that luckily that's on my ipad so i've got a one terabyte ipad and when i film stuff on my phone i then move it onto my ipad to edit it so luckily that footage didn't get lost so i'll edit that video and that'll be up this week and then whatever jobs i've gotten in the week um I'll hopefully have a video out for you next Sunday, so. Um, a lot of people say this about um, electricians don't like doing plumbing or don't know how to do plumbing wiring, but I, I think they probably do. They just don't like doing it because um, it's not that complicated. Uh, I, It's part of the job I enjoy doing, and I think I enjoy it because it's not something I do all the time. Like plumbing, like you do the same thing day in, day out can become boring unless you get like a nice job. But like with that job we did at Valley Road, we, um, so the, the issue we had, we had two heating zones, so two pumps and then two hot water zones off one pump. And the problem was wherever we put the switch live for the boiler, because we had four switch lives, one hot water, two hot water, one heating, two heating, all four of those switch lives went into the boiler on the same terminal. So there was no way of splitting them that the hot water pump didn't come on with the heating pump or the second hot water zone valve didn't open with the first one. There was just no way of doing it. 
So we fitted some relays. Now I've never done relays before. I've never needed to, because I don't do that big a kind of job. You know, mostly I'm a combi slinger and I do breakdowns, boiler breakdowns, fix toilets, do gas certificates. But it was really good fun because, I say fun, I enjoyed it because it was like, right, we've got this problem. And the way, um, the way we came up with the relays, because we were looking at it thinking, right, we need to stop the power going to the pump. And Ben was like, I wish we could fit like a non-return valve, but for electrics. And I was like, well, what about a relay? So we fitted these four relays and all it did was look how they work, drew out a piece of paper, like where, what, what do we need to do? What wires do we need to interrupt? And then we wired one up on a fly lead, put it where we thought it would go and it worked. So then we just put all four of them on and it just, it worked. So it was, I mean, it could have been, we could have been blowing fuses and, having trouble but it just worked first time so it was it was just like a nice enjoyable part of the job um greetings from manchester hello mate right 79p what sam has just sent me 79p what was that for how did you do that um well <laughs> 79p Yeah, see, uh, Naeem, he loves plumbing wiring, does it all day. I enjoy it. I can't, like, I'm not an electrician. I don't understand a lot of what electricians do. I just like doing heating wiring. And I'm, I don't know why a lot of electricians don't get pissed off. Well, they probably do, because the electrical side is an electrician's job. So, like, leave it to the electricians. I'm, I'm of that opinion. I wouldn't get, I wouldn't try and do anything on a on a job that was electrical i'd just say get an electrician but i like wiring up my own heating systems just i think i think we should be able to do that as long as you're competent and confident to do it i think we should be able to do that uh, any news on the last rspca job no nothing yet i think we are going to be doing it but we're just not um i don't know what they're waiting for but when i find out i'll let you know Right, I'm going to wrap it up, guys. So thanks thanks to everyone who joined in. Thanks for all the questions. And, yeah, next Sunday, hopefully, if I'm feeling all right, we'll be back business as usual. I'll get a video out for you. But I will definitely get the Copper Factory tour video up at some point this week. If you're going to a fair Thursday, Friday at Coventry, I'll see you there. It'd be good to meet you. And if you're going to install a show, It'd be good to meet you, and I'll choose one person from the comments to be on my table at the uh, at the Merit Awards. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday night. Thanks for tuning in, and yeah, that's it. I'm going. Cheers, guys.